the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. May the Lord bestow upon us His blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom, now and ever to the age of all ages, Amen. <clears throat> Today is the second Sunday of the Blessed Month of Amshir, and as we were saying last week, the theme of this month uh, pertains to the bread of life, and we go deep into the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 6, and we focus on the blessing um, that God gives us, especially in the sacrament of the Divine Eucharist. And today, today's gospel is quite often repeated throughout the year, especially on the fifth Sunday of the month when, when it comes, at least in the first half of the year. Uh, and um, so there's, there's a lot that we have spoken of uh, before. Um, but one powerful uh, message that the Lord gives us, um, and that often is repeated in theology, is the idea of the change or the transformation. Um, or the, or the, not only the uh, transformation of our lives um, from sin and darkness and death to purity and light and life, <clears throat> but also the, the, the concept of sanctification. And God, in sanctification, God changes the ordinary and makes it extraordinary. He, he changes what is typical to what is atypical or what is beautiful and holy and, and, and powerful. <clears throat> and this is what we see in the church, especially in the, the holy mysteries or the sacraments. <clears throat> but first and foremost, before even we speak or look at the sacraments, um, what was the first revelation of this great transformation of changing what was typical to what was perfect? is in the divine incarnation of our Lord, right? When the Lord Jesus Christ came in the flesh, he took what was normal, he put, took what was typical, he took what was his creation, but had fallen because of sin, and he transformed it and made it one with himself um, and perfect. <clears throat> um, and so when he took his flesh and dwelt among us, um, and he took a body and made it his own, he took humanity and the world, which was broken in a sense and corrupted after the fall, and re he refashioned to it to what? was his original intention. <clears throat> um, and his original intention for us, as he created Adam and Eve, was in his own image and his likeness. <clears throat> and so um, he did something physical to today in the gospel to, with the intention of the same purpose, to lift up the, our minds and our hearts and the people's minds and their hearts towards him, towards the spiritual, towards the heavenly. Um, unfortunately, they didn't get it. Um, and hopefully we don't um, we don't miss uh, th that opportunity as well um, when we because it's it's easy to fall into the trap <clears throat> um, not to receive his grace in vain that is our goal as what Saint Paul um, tells us in his epistle um, so when it comes to the blessing when it comes to the sacraments when it comes to the divine life or the life of transformation we have our part and God are God has, you know, the, the greatest part of the change, but he wants us to take a step. And what are some of those things that we, we must do in, off, in order to, to taste of, of that change? <clears throat> so the first thing is we offer. Um, and this actually has a lot to do with, with what, um, you know, at the, at the beginning of the liturgy, which of the faithful, which is technically after the reconciliation prayer, um, at the end, what happens? How can you can tell um, right after the reconciliation prayer what happens that's visible? Uh, yes, the prosperine or, or, or the, the covering of the altar right now is lifted, right? <clears throat> and we spoke about this before, but the, offer, the, the idea here and the deacon is saying what? Greet one another with a holy kiss because as we said before, we have to be reconciled to our fellow um, uh, brother and sister before speaking to our father, and and then the deacon says after or after the words read one of the holy quiz, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. And then what does he say? He says offer, offer, offer in order. Um, let us attend. Right. <clears throat> um, skip some, skipped some words, of course, but we're going to talk about that part, the offering. Um, and so. In order for God to bless, we have to bring something, right? In order for him, when he blessed the five loaves and two fish, 
they needed something to be blessed, right? So we take what is normal, like we take the bread and the wine and the water, and we bring it to him so he can bless. Um, <clears throat> but also, um, uh, we need to feel that we can't do anything without God, but also that God wants us to do something uh, minute or whatever we can in order to see that he is not just working to bless us externally, but he's blessing whatever we are doing or whatever we are giving. Um, and so that's why in, in the psalm of today, it says, Give to the Lord, you families of the peoples, give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come to his courts. Um, <clears throat> so um, in order for him to bless our life, we have to give him our life. In order for him to bless what we have, we have to say, Lord, this is yours. You gave me this, um, but I need you to be with me in order for for me to see and to be to to, to meet for me to be revealed to me that what is it in truth that it is your blessing and it is you who is doing everything in my life for my salvation, <clears throat> and so we allow him to direct the blessing in our life, <clears throat> but. We have some things to do. Like the first thing is to offer. But then the deacon says what? Offer in order. What does that mean? Well, like St. Paul says, let everything be done decently in order. And that has to do with the order of the church and the rites and the sacraments. Um, like what did he do before he blessed the, the food? He had the people do what? Sit down in groups of 50, right? <clears throat> Um, and so there was a structure, there was a rule, there was a discipline. So when the church puts these disciplines in our daily life for prayer, for fasting, for reading, um, for, for confession, for taking communion, all of these things, it's, it's intentional so that when we do our part of the structure, then God will bless. Um, and so um, we offer our, our whole self to the Lord and to others, and we imitate the Lord who gave himself for our salvation by, number one, bringing it to his feet, offering, and, and doing whatever we can in, in a specific order that is not um, dictated by ourselves, but by our Father of Confession, by our spiritual guide, by the church as a whole. Um, and so this is um, the, the initial step, right? <clears throat> um, there's another time, actually, in, this is just a, a side contemplation of when we offer ourselves to us. So you know the story in the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 17, um, after the Transfiguration. Um, uh, there's, there's a time where the Lord and Simon Peter are going to the temple. They said, no, you have to pay the tax. What are you talking about? <laughs> um, asking the Lord to pay the tax in order to, to enter his, his own house. Right? It's the same thing as if someone stops you before entering your house. No, you have to, you have to pay a toll. <laughs> doesn't make any sense, right? But nevertheless, he told Simon to do what? To go fishing. <laughs> that's that's what he knew. And and the, the fish that he uh, uh, picked picked up um, had a temple tax for both the Lord and him, right? <clears throat> um, so in a sense, um, the Lord submits first to show his willingness to condescend up to a certain point. And the point where we invite him. So there's a lot of um, different explanations and uh, analogies we can put for here. Um, as uh, And first and foremost, we always take the Christological analogy, but I'll, I will just kind of give a small contemplation that's not necessarily um, completely accurate according to the, to, the, to the church fathers, but nevertheless, the spiritual point is, is what we're fishing for. So here... <clears throat> um, as actually Saint Cyril says, the the fish here, who is in the world, um, because the sea is a symbol of the world, as we said before, it reminds us of us, right? And Simon is a symbol of the fisherman who who is a, a representative of who? Uh, the apostles, because he was an apostle and he said, "I would make you fishers of men," right? So the fish is us, right? And we are in the world and we need the apostles um, service in order for us to, to leave the world and to enter so that we can enter into the temple um, <clears throat> but and sometimes first we don't 
accept the Lord in our life, right? I say, I want the tax, I want the money, I want the food, I want the blessing, um, but we don't want anything that's connected to, to the blessing or any of the sacrifice or any of the offering that God is asking us to offer. Um, so um, the Lord says, okay, what needs to happen first? Simon, you fish, fish you out of the world, right? Take what is valuable from you, what you think is valuable, right? From your mouth, from your belly, take out the worldly thing, right? So he can give you the heavenly, right? <clears throat> and this sacrifice, which is not a really a big sacrifice, like what is, what is the, the coin belong in the mouth of the fish anyway, right? Um, but this sacrifice of the worldly thing will open up a whole new world of the spiritual. When God makes more sense to me, um, when I can hear the voice of the Lord when I read scripture, when I desire more to enter into the deeper mysteries of the spiritual life instead of the surface level. Um, it starts with the coin. It starts with the sacrifice. Um, and then when he enters into the temple, he changes it to the church, right? When he enters into my heart, he changes it into a church. Anywhere the Lord enters, it becomes a holy place. It becomes heaven. Um, that's one reason why we call St. Mary the second heaven. Right? But we ourselves also are called to be the temple of God. So we invite him into our life. Um, not just the life on Sunday, but our daily life, our normal work, our typical day, um, even the typical actions, when we notice as an opportunity to invite him, we'll see it changed. Um, even if it, we're doing the same thing as we did yesterday, but with the realization of his presence, things change, our mind changes, our heart changes, our relationship with God changes. So this is an opening of our eyes to the opportunity of say, God, come here. Even though I'm doing something normal or typical or even worldly, but I want you to make it a heavenly act. Um, <clears throat> so this is how um, uh, even like the monks and nuns who are um, out of the world and still doing worldly things like cooking and w cleaning and whatever, but they do it with intention of God's presence and it becomes a holy act. Um, <clears throat> so the same thing can happen uh, with, with all of us as long as we invite him into those daily acts. Um, so um, the second point is, or the, the last point of what the deacon says is let us attend. Right, um, as Saint Paul says in the Epistle of today, he says, "Look to yourselves that we do not lose the things that we have worked for, but that we may receive a full reward." And so, um, one Orthodox writer, I don't have the name, sorry, he says, "Our continual mistake is that we do not concentrate upon the present day, the actual hour of our life. We live in the past or in the future." We're continually expecting the coming of some special moment when our life will unfold itself in its full significance. And we do not notice that life is flowing like water through our fingers, sifting like precious grain from the, a loosely fastened bag. So here he's talking about the missed opportunities that we have of inviting him in, in our daily acts, right? He says, constantly each day, each hour, God is sending us people, circumstances, tasks, which should mark the beginning of our renewal, yet we pay no attention to them. And thus we continually resist God's will for us. Um, so God's will for us is to invite him in our daily activities. Indeed, how can God help us only by sending us in our daily life, certain people, certain coincidences of circumstance, if we accepted every hour of our life as the hour of God's will for us? So this is the point. If we accept every hour of our life as the hour of God's will for us, as the decisive, most important, unique hour of our life, um, what sources of joy, love, and strength as yet hidden from us would spring from the depths of our soul, right? So, so this is how, um, on a daily basis, um, just invite him. Um, <clears throat> he said, let us then be serious in our attitude toward each person we meet in our life, towards every opportunity of performing a good deed. Be sure that you will then fulfill God's will for you in these very circumstances, on that very day, in that very hour. <clears throat> so this reminds us that we need to search for the power of transformation daily. The people came searching for food, not for the, for, for the bread of life, not for the source of all life. Um, <clears throat> so um, 
we offer to God what is imperfect that he may transform it um, but to something that is perfect or that is on the road to perfection. Um, and so um, then we are kind of like this fish that has uh, the, the gold inside, but it is not the gold of the world, but the precious treasure of, of, of the Holy Spirit. As St. Paul says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power uh, may be of God and not of us. Um, <clears throat> and so, uh, yes, we are made of earth. Our bodies are made of the, the dust of the world. Um, but we have the Spirit of God in us, um, especially because we're baptized and prismated in the Lord. And so um, <clears throat> the, the treasure is the things of the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, the sacraments, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. All of these things are the treasures. And the vessel doesn't matter. As long as the vessel is carrying these things, the vessel is important. Um, and even if the vessel gets, uh, you know, cracked or, uh, um, uh, or chipped or anything like that, that's okay, as long as the treasure is not affected. Um, <clears throat> And so um, this is kind of our, uh, our goal, is that um, as St. Paul continues in the, to the Corinthians, he says, um, even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. So we don't want our eyes and our minds to be blinded by the love of the world, um, by the things of the world. And that's why, you know, we fast. That's why we abstain from things um, that are that are not just not just the sinful things, but even some of the worldly things, because we don't want it to have too much um, effect on our minds and our hearts. And we don't want to be blinded, um, as St. Paul says, uh, by these things. Um, and... Uh, so the treasure can can allude to worldly thing, things that we refrain from. As St. Paul says to the Romans, it says, I appeal to you, therefore, by, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Um, so this is the offering. It goes back to the, to the same point of, of the offering. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, just to conclude, um, as, as the fast is, is approaching, God willing, not this coming Monday, but the following, we start with the, the fast of Jonah and the Ninevites, and this always um, is two weeks before the Great Lent. Um, so St. John Chrysostom talks about, well, how can we be a sacrifice? How can I offer myself as a living sacrifice according to what St. Paul says? And he says, uh, this is a common... Uh, a quote that we use especially in the fast, but we'll just refer to it now. He says, How is the body to become a sacrifice? Let the eye look on no evil thing, and it has become a sacrifice. Let your tongue speak nothing filthy, and it has become an offering. Let your hand do no lawless deed, and it has become a whole burnt offering. But this is not enough. We must have good works. So not just to refrain from sin, we have to do good. Uh, let the hand give alms. Let the mouth bless those who oppose one. The hearing finds solace in divine teachings, for sacrifice allows no unclean things. Sacrifice is a first fruit of all other actions. Let us then, from our hands, our feet, our mouths, and our, all our members, yield the first fruit to, to God. May the Lord give us this opportunity to offer to Him our whole selves, so, so that we enter into the offering of Himself, um, and we see the joy um, manifest through uh, the blessing and the grace of the Holy Spirit that he is working in us and through us. Glory be to him now and from the age of ages. Blessed are they.